click out of gallery view into speaker view, but the better way is to bring your cursor to hover over uh, the part where my picture is, uh, where you see me talking right here. <laughs> and a little um, menu box will pop up. One says mute, and then there's one with little three dots. If you click on those three dots and scroll down where it says pin, that will put my picture up um, on your screen and you can always see what I'm doing uh, instead of it from time to time clicking to show other people. Uh, so that's one helpful note. And then I want to do a couple of really quick um, commercials because <laughs> some of you may or may not know I'm teaching other art classes and I have a bunch of what I'm calling virtual holiday paint party classes advertised right now. I sent them out to my email list if you're not on my email list and you want to be, go to my website, which is just my name, mchristinelandis.com, and go to the contact page, and there's a sign up for the newsletter button on there. Click that, and it'll ask you for your information, and you can get on my mailing list. And also on the news and exhibits page on my website, um, on that tab, there's all the information about my virtual classes and they're just ten dollars per class and you provide your own materials but i do send you the traceable image that we're painting and then you it, it's like a you know a paint along we're using watercolors or acrylics uh so that's a super fun thing i'm doing and actually i'm going to switch to my tabletop so i can show you some of the pictures and there we go um this is this is one i'm going to zoom way in since i can oops wrong one <laughs> there uh, there <laughs> okay this is one of the images this is one this is a vintage where did it go there, Vintage Seafaring Santa. Uh, and then I have this image and then this angel painting that you can actually see on my uh, YouTube channel, which is also just my name and you can find that going to my website. But anyway, if you're interested in any of those classes, um, just go to my website and you can get all that information. And I guess since Jackie's not here, um, she won't type that in the chat. So maybe let's see what I've got here. Uh, let me hop up here real quick. Now I gotta see if I, oops, not quite right. I can't see my um, letters on my laptop from standing down here. <laughs> so I have to climb up in the step ladder. But there, there is my, um, there's my website. So if you want to sign up or check out what I'm doing, uh, and I put information about these um, library classes on there too. So if you lose your information and you can't find it, you can always go to my website and I, it'll be on there on the news tab. Uh, so now today um, we're going to be drawing and a little bit of painting. Uh, so I'm going to, let's see, I think I said everything that needed to be said for or any kind of announcements. So let me close up that chat thing. And somebody said they couldn't find the way to pin me to the screen. If you're still having trouble with that, uh, you just have to hover your, your cursor over my picture and click once or click on the three dots. 
And if you're not finding that, I don't know what else to tell you. You could click to speaker view instead of gallery view, and that's the next best thing. Uh, now I'm going to switch my screen back down again to my tabletop and show you what I have here is a sample. Let's let's zoom in a little bit more. This is a sample um, for. I'm sorry, the chat is is popping up in front of everything that I'm looking at, and Jackie's not here today to take care of that. Um, this is a sample of what we're doing. Uh, it's called watercolor tie-dye letters. What we're going to do is just draw some uh, letters, and I've done it before, and there's a thing on my YouTube channel of my name, uh, Christine, and, uh, and I show how to actually I think the one on the YouTube channel, I just did Chris, but uh, I show you how you can do this. And you could do this with any word or, or uh, phrase or name, anything you want to. And I just picked this because it's a holiday theme and I thought it'd be good. And this one is not finished, but I wanted to show you the direction we're going. But today we're gonna uh, pick out our word and I'm gonna show you how to write either bubble letters or block letters something like that, and then we're gonna put some watercolor on them, and we'll stop at that point today because the watercolor needs to be completely dry before you start putting uh, any of this other decorative stuff on there, which I did. So you'll know for next week, I use all of these kind of uh, pens and um, colored markers. These are just Sharpie pens. These are some colored brush pens that I got at uh, Michael's, something like this. And um, then I have, I have tons more markers in all kinds of colors. And these are great. I love these because these have this blending pen. These are blendable and um, they come with a blending pen which means you can get some really fun effects. So this is all stuff for next week. You wanna be sure and have on hand some markers, um, colored pencils, you know, just, just regular, get this out here to show you, just regular colored pencils in a variety of colors. You can even use ballpoint pens or highlighters or anything you happen to have on hand. I want this get back there like it's supposed to go there um, so don't worry if you don't have exactly the right supplies that's perfectly okay you just need uh, some variety of something to make marks and colors on your paper with uh, one thing I will tell you though these gel pens this is a white gel pen and I use it to make white over top of the watercolor and stuff like that because you cannot paint white with watercolor very well but this gel pen will make nice uh, marks on there and that is what I used here to put these stripes that give the appearance of candy cane and to put these snowflakes on over here I used gel pens for that so keep that in mind now I got some words here to give you just some direction if you don't want to do your name although doing your name is fine and also if you want to give this as a gift I think Julie had mentioned uh, last class time that you could uh, do your friend's name and give it as a gift if you wanted to, and that's a great idea. But I've got some holiday themed words here, um, like Santa's Workshop and uh, Feliz Navidad. And those are a little on the long side, um, but here's some more ones. I've got uh, Peace on Earth. Um, you could use Noel or Joy or just the word peace. Um, you could write out Deck the Halls or Jingle Bells or let it snow or winter wonderland use your imagination and uh real quick here think up what word you want to use i'm going to do uh noel i think actually no well yeah i'm going to do noel because it's a pretty word and i like it and now you'll need some pencils you'll need your paper and this can be it watercolor paper is great for this it could also be mixed media paper, and if you don't have any of that, this will be okay for you to use cardstock. 
um, cause we're going to put some watercolor on here, but the bulk of what we're doing will be next week with all the markers and stuff. And so a uh, cardstock will hold up. Okay. To that. If you don't have watercolor paper, uh, I'm going to just put mine on a regular piece of paper here. Well, regular piece of watercolor paper and it's in a watercolor block. So I don't have it taped down. If you're not using a watercolor block or, or some good watercolor paper, uh, like if you are using cardstock, I would advise you to tape that down to a board of some kind because we'll be putting enough water on it that it'll warp pretty bad if you uh, don't do that. And I just realized, let me switch this back to this screen because I'm talking to you and you can't see me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you if you have thinner paper, do tape it down because we're going to be putting enough water on it that it'll it'll start warping all up and not doing what you want it to do. Um, you can also put this on a piece of paper that you're going to end up folding in half and turn it into a holiday greeting card or something like that. And that's another great idea you can do with this technique. So now I uh, hope that you got your word figured out. And what I want you to do is just to visualize on your paper how uh, much space your word will take up. Now I'm doing Noel. That's super easy. It's just four letters. So that's going to be easy to figure out. If you're doing one of these longer words, I would recommend that you write it out on a separate piece of paper and count up the letters and see how many uh, letters you've ha got and, and how much space that's going to take up on your paper so that you uh, don't end up uh, with with half of your word or phrase on there and the rest you don't have room on your paper anymore so um, and, and also you don't want it to be too small so there again it is kind of best if you use something a little on the shorter side especially maybe for this one we're doing today because I'm hoping that once I teach you how to do it you'll have a good time with it so much that you want to do some more of it uh, on your own at home so <coughs> excuse me um, pick your word and then figure out about how much space it's going to take up on your page. Now you can, if you've got a ruler, I've got a little short one here, you can put your ruler there, but I don't advise that you draw a line on it because that line is going to be hard to erase and remove it from your finished product. Uh, it, it'll, it'll show, <coughs> excuse me, got to get a drink of water. Anyway, if you can do this without drawing a line, that's better. What I have done before, especially when I'm doing something with a lot of letters, is I put a ruler on here and I make a mark. Like if I'm doing something with 16 letters, um, if I block off an 8-inch section here, that lets me know that every letter is going to only be able to be about a half an inch wide or it's going to take up more than... Uh, eight inches on my paper. So look at your size of your paper, whatever size you have, and the amount of space there, and kind of gauge how big each of your letters need to be. And then you can take your pencil and put a real light dot uh, for each uh, at each of those half inch marks or one inch marks, whatever it is you've decided is uh, going to be the right size for what you're working on. And since I have four letters that I'm doing, I can see that I can easily, I would, to use up my whole page, I would like to use up something about eight inches wide. Well, if I've only got four letters, that means each letter should be about two inches wide. So I would put a little dot right there at two inches. Well, need one at the start and at two inches and over here at four and at six and at eight. And in that way, I've marked off and I should probably have done it lower if I wanted to keep that near the base of the letters. But I've marked off how wide and how that gives me a gauge of the size to make my letters. So um, that's that's the more logical way to do it. If you want to just be creative and just jump in there and start drawing on the paper, that works too. You end up with a much more organic and, and loose uh, creation. And those look really great too, especially with this technique we're working on. So I'm going to just, uh, now that I've got those, those markings on there, I'm going to go ahead and take a, a pencil. This is a, a B 
uh, like a 2B, but this is just, I guess, a 1B, but they don't put a 1 in it. A B or a 2B or a regular pencil, or you could use, and I don't have one out here, but like a mechanical pencil, something um, that's not got too soft a lead because you don't want a whole lot of graphite rubbing off on your paper because that'll make your colors look dirty and, and not pretty. Uh, but also don't press down real hard because you don't really want all these pencil marks to show later. Uh, we're we're going to put some other stuff on here that'll look pretty. So draw your letters real lightly and just spell out your word. And you can use rounded edges or block ledges, I mean, block edges, block letters, uh, or um, you know, if you've got a favorite font that you like and you want to imitate that font, this is just something where you're just going to start putting something on here. And I'm going to make mine a little fancy. Let's see what would be a fancy in. Let me put something over there like that and go over way over here and up. Something that like that just looks sort of fancy. And let me zoom in again so that you can get this in the light and see it real good there. That I think shows. I've now got some light coming in the window. Let me uh, adjust that because that'll make it where you can't see. Is that better? Yeah, much better. Okay. So there, I've got my N on there. Now my next mark is over here and I'm just gonna make another letter in there. And this part, you go ahead and be as creative as you wanna be with the style of your lettering. But also what we're gonna do will look very pretty if you just put plain block letters on here. So if that's what you know how to do, then do that. Uh, and at this point while we're drawing, if anyone has any questions, uh, I think today we'll let you unmute and ask your question because if you put it in the chat, I'm not sure, uh, Julie, if you're monitoring the chat or not. Uh, I can, but either way, I'll monitor the chat or just, you know, if you have a question, go ahead. Okay. And ask. Okay. So any, any questions, jump right in there and ask, but, but go ahead and get your letters drawn. I think everyone is working hard. I see all the heads down. <laughs> Thank you. 
And I just scrolled through and everyone who's got their video on really looks like they're working hard. Hi, Carmela. Okay, um, where are you now? Oh, okay. Um, I'm kind of tired of I'm going to see if I can block out this sun streak coming through here. You may or may not can tell I'm not at my normal studio today. I'm uh, actually at my dad's house. Coming to you from Texas. And you're, it looks like you're talking, but you're muted. Are you going to have a party? Oh, <laughs> um, possibly. I was at my sister's yesterday, and we had a really nice day together. And she gave me, let me show you what, what I got. She gave me this little, this nice little bag. I'll, uh, I guess I better leave that up. So you'll have to look in the little screen up. Oh, I don't have it up there. Da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, she gave me this bag, Ooh. and this is what was in it. There's three of these, but they're little flamingo ornaments for my Christmas tree. <laughs> oh, really <laughs> so I, nice. I got three of those. <laughs> they're very Florida. Cute. And my aunt stopped by this morning, and she gave me some Harry and David chocolate covered cherries. Ooh, yes. I'm excited for these. This Excellent. is already in a box, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Happy birthday again. Thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> How's the weather down there? Uh, it's 45 degrees, but the sun oh, is shining. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you're not finished uh, with your drawing yet, you probably need to speak up and say you need more time. Otherwise, we're going to move forward into the next step. I need more time. Okay. <laughs> so um, hold up your pictures if you're finished and let me see uh, the words you're drawing. Or just tell me your word. I don't know. I can't see it, but I'm, I'm curious to, to know. It's hard to see. Maria Teresa. Oh, okay. Maria Teresa. It's hard Very to see. Nice. It is a little hard to see. I guess it's you probably light. better. Just, just tell me your words because the it's pencil light. drawings okay. are not showing up in the laptop screens and desktop screens too good. We had no. a new, we, we had a no new, um, we had a new grandniece uh, arrive last week. Her name is Carly Ray, so I'm doing her name. Oh, oh beautiful. So nice. And are you in Dallas? Yes, I am. Uh, we know Dallas very well. Our son and his family used to live there for many years. All right. They went to Greenville. Are you familiar with Greenville? School? I know right where Greenville is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we like Dallas. Now they're in Boston. <laughs> ah, well, I don't know much of anything about Boston, but. Uh, we do now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did. We did until. <laughs> until when? February. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That's true. I just wrote happy 2021 because it has to be better than 2020. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Okay, um, while whoever's yet finishing up finishes, I'll go ahead and give a few more um, 
instructions or, or information you're going to need. Uh, we're going to actually paint with watercolor. If you don't have watercolors, you can either use some colored pencils or some pastels or chalk for this. Uh, or you could maybe use a little bit of acrylic if you uh, want to add a little bit of water to it. Uh, this is the, the watercolor tie-dye part of the project, and it, it's the base that we'll work from. This right here, you can see um, I've got watercolor on underneath where I started going in and, and coloring with markers and stuff. And again, this one's not finished, uh, but I like to get all this... Uh, interesting stuff going on here and get the paint. This is where I put some watercolor on and I'll show you how to get it to do all this funny stuff. I did not use a straw, just uh, my own breath and I put paint on there and blew on it, but we'll, we'll, that's what we're about to do. But in order to do all that, you're going to need some uh, a container of water, some paper towels, uh, some... You, you'll probably not need this many paintbrushes. <laughs> Uh, just something that you can easily fit the size of your brush into your letters that you drew. So get something, uh, a flat and a round that are size appropriate to whatever letters you drew. And I'm going to use these two right here because those will allow me to paint within these, uh, the lines that I drew for my letters. And I am going to go ahead and put my pencil stuff away right now. And again, we're not using the markers and stuff like that today. You will need those next week for the next class. So I'm setting all these over here out of the way. So I can open up my paint palette. Let's just move these things right over here. Oh, and... Um, I was telling you, you could do this for greeting cards. I probably should have showed you these. If you're going to do a greeting card style, rather than paint on the whole page, you paint on half of it like this so that then you can come back through and fold it in half and you've got a nice little greeting card that you made. And you can send this to your friends and boy, will they be impressed uh, with your hand painted and handmade uh, holiday cards. I heard on the TV this morning, on the Today Show, I think it was, that this year the trend is toward mailing cards because everybody's been doing everything online and we're tired of it and we want something to come in the mail um, to be, to get us out of that doing everything online. So um, the trend is more to the paper cards that you receive in the mail. And I was surprised that no one talked about handmade cards because they're so easy and quick to do. So um, there's just a quick little how to do it. Paint on one half and, uh, you know, the, the possibilities of what you can paint are endless. And, and you paint on one half and then fold it in half and you've got a nice card. And if you think ahead just a little bit, which I usually forget to do. But you can size the piece of paper that you start out with the right size to match uh, whatever envelopes you either have or can buy at the store. And then you don't have the problem I always have where I'm running around with the card that I've finished or the group of cards I've finished and I'm going to all the stationery stores trying to find envelopes that fit the cards already made. A little bit of pre-planning and you can make your paper the right size to fit envelopes that are gonna be easy to find. But it's, it's super fun and easy and uh, your friends and family will be thinking you are pretty amazing if you do that. Uh, so I've got my paint palette here, my brushes, uh, my paper towels, and water. These things are just little things that I put out here for, um, they help me draw circles. And again, this is these are things we, we'll need next week. So I put them out here to just give you that little heads up so you can have all week long to start gathering up uh, the things you're gonna need for next class. Put those over here out of the way. And, um, Hopefully this is not too dark. It's looking a smidgen dark. I might have to open that. Uh, I I'm going to go away again, but you can still hear me. So I'm zooming this back in because, yeah, we can see a whole lot better when it's zoomed in. Um, and I still have this little sunspot. So I'm thinking if I open up my curtains a, a 
my blinds a little bit to let more light in. It might let more sun in, too, which we don't really want. So, the one on that side, did that do anything? Mm, maybe a little better. Uh, I'm going to leave it like it is. So hopefully we, we won't have any difficulty with it. I do have a couple of little dots there that I want to erase. So let me just move those little dots out of here. Because again, whatever, whatever uh, pencil lines are on here, once you get water and paint on here, it kind of sets that uh, graphite or the lead marks into the paper and you'll be able to see them. You will not be able to erase them once you get water on them. So whatever's there that you don't need, go ahead and erase now. And the first thing we're going to do, um, well, I guess I should ask, is anyone not ready yet? Hopefully we're ready to move forward. If you're not, speak up now or it's going to be too late. <laughs> okay, so uh, with a paintbrush, go ahead and just get some clean water uh, on the first letter. You, there, you don't need to do all of them because we're going to do one letter at a time. And what I want you to do is to just get water right in the lines of your letter there because... Remember, the paint goes where the water is. So where the paper's dry over here, the paint's not going to go there. And by putting the, the water right here, we're going to get a nice straight line, which is absolutely not important at all in this technique. But, you know, since we're learning how to do, this is a, a version of practicing the watercolor technique called wet into wet where we've got the paper wet and we're going to put wet paint on there. Then we put another color on there and they're going to blend together uh, right on the paper and make watercolor magic happen. So I'm just getting a lot of water in here. Now, this is also a really good thing to do to practice learning how much water to put on here to do the wet and wet technique. Cause if you put, uh, a whole bunch of water and you've got like a puddle of water on this paper sitting right there on the top of the paper inside this letter. Let's see if I can put it up here and tilt it any at all so you can see. Eh, probably can't really, you can't really see, but I've got a whole lot of water. I'm just not getting it. To, the light won't pick up that sheen for me. But I think you know what I'm talking about. When you tilt it and you can see um, in the light, you can see the paper's wet right here, and it's really wet. And if you have a whole lot of water, when you tilt it like this, your water starts running off across the page. Um, and I've not got quite that much water, but it, that is really wet right there. So then I'm going to say, well, what colors would I like this first letter? And because I'm doing a holiday word, I'm going to pick some version of red. And I've got a nice bold red right here. It's called alizarin crimson. And it's probably the red that's most similar to the, the bright, uh, really red color in your um, sets of paint. Uh, the paint sets that we use when we paint in person at the library. Uh, I get those at Walmart, but you can also get like a $10 set at um, Michael's or the other art supply stores, and this would be closest to the red that you have in that set. But anyway, I've, I've got a lot of red on my brush here. I don't know if you saw what I was doing, but I've just really rubbed a lot of that paint, mixed it with the water that's on my paintbrush, and I have a nice thick color. Look at it right there. See how thick that is and pretty? So I'm going to get a lot of paint there, and I'm going to just touch it into that wet area on my paper. And uh, you can see it's starting to spread already because the paper is wet. So the paint's spreading out and doing this blooming kind of a thing. And I'm just going to put a lot of color right here in this part of this letter because I want it really good and dark right here. 
and everywhere my paper is wet, it's going to start running in that direction. That is such a bright red, pretty color. Now, um, I'm going to rinse a little of that out and go with a pinker color. I have a couple of different pinks and magentas in my paint palette over here too, so I'm going to little, get a little bit of those just to give some variation to the color in there. And I'm going to put a little bit of that pink right up in here. And I like a little of it right over here. Then I'm going to rinse that out again, and I've got a red that tends more toward orange. Mine is called Scarlet Lake, but it's just a much more orangey red color. You can see the difference of it right there. So I've got this brighter orangey color, and I'm going to put that up in this top part up in here. And I talked a little much, so my water's starting to dry up. So it's not running quite as much as it normally would. But it's still doing pretty good. And I'm just going to bring it down here and touch that other paint color. I'm not going to swish it in and out of the paint. I'm just going to let the paint colors touch. And they're wet enough that they're going to just kind of mix together uh, on their own and look real pretty. They'll do some, some interesting color shifting together there. And I'll just put this right along that line. Now, I told you it was not really necessary that you follow the lines. It's really not because I'm going to do, you know, you can leave yours like that, but I like to have a lot of, uh, a lot of this messy stuff happening with mine where the color is just spreading all over and kind of, bleeding out and going everywhere. And I also like to pick it up and then just tilt it back and forth and let the colors run. I'm thinking this is a little darker than what we want in here. I might have to let the sun just be on the paper so you can see that paint running better because I, I want you to see that part. So we have a little sunshine on there, but hopefully you can see the color good so I want you to see how the colors running together and if it's not running as much as you want it to I just turn it sideways like this and bounce it on the table and it kind of mixes a little and also you can blow on it and that will make it move it's this one is not moving as much as I want it so if I want it to move more than it will move the next trick is to pull out the spray bottle. And you have to go a little easy with this in the beginning part because while the paint's still mostly wet, it uh, will, will almost wash all of it right off there. And we don't want to wash it all off. So I'm just going to spray it lightly, a couple of little hits to put a little bit more water on it, and then just do what I need to do to get that paint to move around on this paper. Now it's starting to move, and um, if I hold it just right, you can sort of see there is a little bit, you can see the sheen on it and see how wet it is. It's still very wet, and um, I've got a little bit of a puddle starting to happen right there, and if I was to blow on it, I could probably blow it off that direction. Let's give it a try and see what happens. Okay. Okay it did a little bit of moving. I'm going to blow more on some of this other part with a lot more water in there on further letters because I like a lot of that. I just like the appearance of it. That's how I get all of this kind of stuff happening. And those things I think really add a lot to my piece. And it's, um, it, it's like not planned. It's, makes it look spontaneous, I think. Um, <clears throat> so uh, now I'm going to go ahead and, well, yeah, 
That one's <coughs> that one's not moving a lot. Hold on a second. Okay, I had to drink a little drink of water again. Um, if this was still having a lot of, if yours has a lot of wetness puddled up on your page and you've got it like you like it, you want to let that dry a little bit before you move to your next letter. Uh, but mine is is pretty much stopped. What will what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some really wet color in here and try to move make it move over that way. And some of this color will get inside that and mix with that color. And that does really neat things too. So let's watch what I can do with this here. I'm going to get this letter. I'm going to get the water all around in the letter O. <coughs> oh, I still got that tickle in my throat. <coughs> anyway, I'm getting water all around inside the letter. <coughs> I'm getting another drink of water for myself. <coughs> And then while that's really wet, I'm going to put some yellow in there. So I'm going to a nice, strong bit of yellow. There's my yellow color. It's it's um, a lot of pigment in the in the brush here. And I'm going to just put it on here. but I'm trying to keep it out of that center part for now. I may let some more get in there later, but right now I want this one to not have it in the center. And I'm gonna add a bit more water so it's lighter on this side a little bit, but mainly I just wanna have plenty of water in here. Plenty of pigment over on this side now, when I pick that up and tilt it around, uh, maybe you can see there's a little bead of paint running right up in the edge on this edge. And I'm going to move that over toward the end by blowing on it. So, look what that did. Nice. Now that will... That will continue to change a little bit as it dries, but I like it like that, so I'm gonna put it down. And my paper wants to tilt downhill that way, so I'm gonna just prop this end up a little bit, put a pin under there, and keep it so that gravity is working on it, pulling it that way just a little bit. And I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. Now this color is blending into the reds in there, so it's, um, it's going to still show, but it's also going to blend together and there'll be a lighter, some lines and dots in there, but it won't be that the same bright yellow as this because the colors are blending together. If I'd had green over, I mean, blue over here and yellow here, then I would, it would start to look greenish in there because they're blending together. So you, you kind of keep those things in mind too, when you're deciding what colors to put on and, and, uh, um, what to mix together. But this is a fun way to practice with wet into wet and learning how much water and paint to actually put on your paper because we're going to make it run all, run all over the place and you, you learn uh, pretty quickly how wet it can be and how full of paint it can be and still not run or blend as much. So so this is a, a good thing to do if you want to learn to control your watercolor in the wet and wet technique better. If you've been having trouble with that, play around with this, you know, painting your name or, or um, fun words or phrases and practice. And this will help you really get a good handle on how much water to add and how wet your paper should be. Now, if I picked this up and started tilting it around some more at this point, 
it's wet enough that it will still move. So I'm going to paint my next letter, but I'm going to do it without, um, w without tilting the paper too much. So that means, um, where to put my brush? Oh, I left it in my water. I'm not, not supposed to do that. I'm going to get all that yellow paint out of my brush, which I can tell by rubbing it on the paper towel. It's the brush is clean now. So now put some, start out with putting water in here. Now I'm going to put an abundance of water in this one and put a whole lot of water on here because that way when I tilt it, I don't have to tilt it and knock it around a whole lot and it'll, it'll uh, run off to somewhere and do something. I'm not sure what it'll do, but, but I like to play with it and see what happens. So I've got a whole lot of water on there. And when I lean down and look, I can see I actually have water puddling on this paper right here inside of this letter E. And I'm going to go for uh, a bright green color on this one. So let me get some nice green color on here. That's the green that is the color I'm using, but I can see that's not quite as strong of a pigment because I have a lot of water already on my paper. So the pigment that I put in there needs to be strong. So I've got a lot of pigment there. That's getting more like it. Nice dark color, and I'm just going to drop some in here. And I have all this water on here. You can see this is just kind of uh, floating there in these big puddles and not staying put where I, where I put it. It's, it's spreading out and blooming. And I'm going to... Add, let's see, what color else do I want to put in? I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise color to that, just because I'm curious to see what it'll do. I have, actually, I have a Mayan blue that tends more to green than blue, but it's like a turquoise. I'm going to just put some of that in there. And to give you a reference of what color this is, there's the color right there. Water. So there's a lot of good color, and I'm just putting that in here. Kind of getting out close to the edges. But this has so much water on it, it's going to yes. run all over everywhere. Did someone have a question? Or was that just something else happening there? Okay, so there's my dark color stuck in there. Now, watch what happens when I pick it up and start tilting it. This is this is still wet, so I don't want to I don't want to wreck that. So I'm going to just tilt carefully over this way, and all of my paint is running over to the left edge of my letter E. And I've got a giant puddle down there. And if I tilt it this way, did you see that run right down to the bottom there? No. Yep. Now I'm going to have this one. Uh, let's see where I want it to go. I'm deciding, do I want it to go off the top or off the bottom? Um, I'm thinking I'll have this one go off the bottom there. So I've got my big puddle right there. And I'm just going to blow on it. <sighs> And look what it did. Wow. I like the look of that. Just from blowing that big paint puddle over. Wow. So I'm going to let that lay there like that. 
and again I want gravity to to keep it going where I want it to go so I'm going to prop my page up just a little bit this way to keep the gravity pulling the paint more this direction so I've got this edge of my this corner of my paper is propped up so now that's going to go like that now I'm going to stand here and look at that for a minute while that gets a little bit dry because again if I was to do the L right away next um, whatever I do to that I'm even tilting the paper and everything is going to change what this is doing because this is still really wet too so I'm going to have to let it dry a little bit and this is where a lot of artists will pick up their blow dryer and blow dry their their watercolor piece I don't like to do that and the reason why is because the air coming out of your blow dryer is going to act just like that air uh, that I just blew on here it's going to be pushing the pigment around and I would rather let it lay there and just do what it's going to do on its own I like the results of that better but that's another thing you can practice with uh, and play with at home if you want to and just learn what the results are when you do that and then you do gain somewhat better control over your watercolors watercolors notoriously known for being the paint that you can't control you don't have any control over it that's why some people say oh it's too hard i don't want to paint with watercolor um, because you know it, it does have a mind of its own and it will kind of run all over the place and mix and do things on its own that's part of the magic though and if you learn ahead of time a little bit of control you can get it where you're you're sort of shepherding it in the direction you want it to go and uh and that's the amount of control you can have over it and still get these really pretty magical um spontaneous appearance things going on in your watercolor so um while I'm waiting for my gigantic puddle of green right there to dry, does anyone have any questions at this point or comments? Nope. Still working hard? Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. We're, we're a quiet group today, and I guess everyone's just working hard. And there's no, no questions in the chat either. Okay. If we have more than four letters, should we go ahead and do yes. more? Yes. You you don't at this point you don't need to wait for me because I've showed you pretty much all of the technique and what what the uh, the idea is. Uh, so this is play time, and and I think that's partly why we're quiet. We're we're playing and thinking and creating here. Uh, so go ahead and do all of your letters. Um, Feel free if you have a question to just jump in there and ask, but go ahead and, and uh, put water on and put pigment in and tilt your paper left and right and up and down and knock it on the table if you want to try and see what that does, because that'll, that'll pull your paper, I mean your paint down on your paper as well, um, and blow on it, uh, just have fun with it, and this is today's goal to get or objective is to get all your letters having some watercolor color on them and get some of this preliminary stuff happening i did want to show you too uh once it's dry um i like how this looks so i'm hesitant to to do this quite yet but you can spray the the way i got all of this stuff going up in here was once this was completely dry i sprayed it real good with my water uh, bottle and then again I just tilted it and knock it on the table like this let me show you on here you knock it on the table like this just bounce it around and tilt it the other direction and bounce it there and tilt it on its side and you can just shake it back and forth like this and all those things will cause the pigment that you put on there to to shift to where the water is that you sprayed on there and you can get more uh, really cool effects that way and once this is pretty much dry i'm going to spray mine with the water bottle just kind of spray all over everything and give it a little bit of shaking and what that will do it kind of helps the letters just start to melt a little into the paper and you end up with these little 
auras kind of outside of some of the letters and they start blending together. And I like how that looks. So I'm going to do more of that, but that's a thing that I will do once this is dry, then I will spray it with this, with the spray bottle. And this is a fine mist spray bottle. You get completely different effects, uh, can be determined by whether you use a fine mist or a spray bottle that kind of puts out bigger droplets of water. So that's another fun thing to experiment with and see what kind of results you can get. I always find that I like it when it's at this stage. I, I like the appearance of it and I'm tempted to leave it alone and call it done. But I always do end up uh, really having a lot of fun and liking it even more when I go uh, into it after it's dry and start the next phase with the markers and pens and colored pencils and stuff. So um, this is fun, but I'm looking forward to next week. And I think this is... I've still got a really large puddle right there, and I don't like it quite as dark, so I'm just going to tilt it and see where it runs to. So I'll turn it so you can see too. And then if I tilt it up this way, it'll run over that way a little. I can kind of just guide that paint where I want it to go. That went outside the bounds, but that's kind of pretty too, so I'm leaving it. And I think I'm going to, I'm ready to go ahead and do my last letter. And I'm going to make that a bright, bright, pretty blue. But again, first, water. A lot of paint in this one as well, so I'm going to figure where I want that to blow, which direction I want that one to go, so. 
a little bit of tilting. Oh, I've got a big blob of that lighter color running right up in there, and that's going to dry and do some cool stuff. <coughs> well, con este Deixa eu deixar uma carinha. Deixa eu botar isso forte. I think I'm going to go put color on the inside of my letter O now. I made it instead of a regular circle shape, like a donut, I put a star in there. And I think I'm going to want to put some dark blue in that. Okay. actually think I like the way that that is just doing <clears throat> its thing there. I'm going to pull this right down here a little bit more. I'm going to pull this back just a little. And I like the look of that with the little um, white area around it. So I'm going to see how that dries just like that. That's probably going to be really nice. I may change my mind later, but that's the fun of creating art. And mine, I think is, I'm going to let it dry the whole way and then I'll show you what happens when you spray it with the, with the spray bottle but I'm, mine's done for now. So I guess anybody else who's done <clears throat> wants to show me their, their painting so far, I'd be glad to see it. Everyone can mute, but if we if we're looking at yours, you can unmute and talk to us. Thanks. It's a little messy, but it's I'm gonna do things to it. Yes, that's perfect. Perfect, Ann. You got exactly the right technique going there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is Mercedes with Christine's name. Oh, hi, Mercedes. Oh, that's cute. I like it. Thank you. I think sometimes if I share the wrong link, it, it 
it might have my name on it because I registered or something. I took it from your Facebook. Yeah, that's, I, I thought I was sharing the generic link, but I, I realized later, I think I shared the, the one that's where I registered and it was just for me. I think that's why it sometimes happens that uh, somebody else has the same name as me because of the, something to do with how the registration works. But it's, anyway. It's exactly, I, I just figured it out that I shared my registration with Roberta or Bobby, and now now I see her name is my name. So that's what. <laughs> oh well, we know who's who. Yeah. <laughs> so yours is very pretty too, Mercedes. <clears throat> Anybody else want to share theirs? Or I should say, anybody else ready to share? <laughs> I I use a straw to blow the paint, so it. Uh -huh just to have it more controlled. Right. Let me see yours again one more time. Yes, okay, I see that. <laughs> so you can you can do it with the straw if you prefer, if it works better for you, or you can do it, uh, you know, you can even use your hair dryer. That might, uh, that might make some more interesting results. I don't know. Yeah, I don't have one. <laughs> but the straw and, and just blowing with your mouth works. Yes. Anybody else ready to share? This is mine. I, I can't see if you can. I don't see myself. So. I see Maria's and I see, I don't know. Oh, that's Marianne right there. M-N. Is that you, Marianne? I can't see your face. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I see Peace by Diane. Looks beautiful. Looks like Marianne did more than one. <laughs> and uh Oh, you did a bunch. Good. Good job. <laughs> Susan Lazarus has a pretty one. Thank you. <laughs> it's I copied you. <laughs> uh, well, you know, that's acceptable because you're learning how to do it, right? Correct. Uh, Shelly, I see you've got, I see most of yours, Shelly. It's not all in the, in front of the camera. There we go. It says peace. That's pretty. So once, once you get it uh, where you've got color on all of the letters, then it's ready to, to um, set it aside, let it get good and dry. And then next week we will start all of the, the fancying it up with markers and pens and stuff. So you can be thinking of what things do you, might come to your mind. Um, when you look at the word that you wrote, um, it, like in my case, it's a holiday word. So I'll be thinking stars and snowflakes and holly and berries and pine garlands and just any kind of thing you can think of uh, or, or even some patterns. If you want to just draw a pattern in there, we're going to uh, sit and be creative. Next week will probably be even more quiet than this one because it's a lot of uh, looking at your piece and, and thinking, what do I see there? What should go there? And so then we just, um, we'll just work. Maybe I'll see, I'll talk to Julie about maybe uh, we can have some music playing in the background or something, uh, because otherwise it's going to be awfully silent. We'll just hear the little scratching of people's pens and markers on their paper. <laughs> okay, good. I can put something on. Okay. <laughs> So does anyone have any more questions? Anything yeah. about the supplies or anything at all you can think of that we might need to know? It's 2.15 and we could really end it now so everybody can finish uh, on their own. 
but I know I might be repeating myself, but for all those that weren't on at the beginning of the class, um, we are meeting again next Friday at one o'clock and then we're taking a break and coming back in January after the holidays. And those two dates will be January 8th. And on that day, we're going to be painting a drawing and painting a beach scene. And then again on January 22nd, and we'll be drawing a blue tang fish and painting that. And the same supply list will be used for those classes as well. And the same exact member ID number and passcode is going to be used. And I'm just going to read it off again. The member ID for all the remaining classes is 876-8073-9000. And the passcode is 851441. And you can share that with any of your friends and hopefully soon we will have um, really created a, a large group of artist friends. So can thank you, you so that? much. Yep, any questions? Repeat that number. Which um, the member ID number? 876-8073. 9273. And then the passcode is 851441. Um, Christine, yes. I, I have a question for Christine. Yes. Um, my colors are looking a little wacky. I mean, how would you plan the colors so that they look more coordinated? Look. Well, um, it is very colorful and what you can do to unify it will be next week when we start working with the markers and things. I'll show you some ways to change those things, but also um, I'm going to spray mine with the water bottle and show you. Uh, if you spray a lot of water, you can practically wash all the paint off of your paper, so you don't want to spray too much. But misting a little bit over there uh, mm -hmm. and then tilting your paper back and forth can, can merge your colors a little bit. Okay. Again, if you do too much, they will all run together and turn to mud. Everything on there will be all one color and it'll be a muddy gray brown and not pretty. So okay. you don't want to overdo that. But a little bit of misting. Let's see if mine is dry enough to do this. I think it's, it's probably dry enough to give it a whirl. So let me, uh, I'm going to pin my name back on the, to the main screen for myself. But I don't know if this, this probably doesn't, oh, well, wait a minute. There was a spotlight for everyone. How can I undo that? Oh, I missed it. I can't spotlight it for everyone there. Let me let me uh, go back to gallery view. Okay, then I'm going to go back to mine again. Hit those three dots, and this says spotlight for everyone. Remove all pinned. Uh, I'm going to continue with this there. So everyone should be able to see my screen now, hopefully. And I will zoom it in. Let's see if I zoom it way in. How this will do okay so you should be able to see it a close up right there and I'm, i've just got my regular um spray bottle there we go um and, and it, again it's a fine mist and i'm just gonna spray water on there and i'm gonna leave it laying flat and this just kind of see how everything is starting to to go out there yeah in where i where i put this water i'm gonna put a little bit more red over here on the red side Mm -hmm. and it's just running now and mm -hmm. doing some of this i love this part um, because it it kind of merges everything together mm -hmm. but again if you do too much your paint's going to all mix together and turn into one brown color so <laughs> not to do too much got it got it thank you you're mm -hmm. welcome i also saw that penny uh asked uh, let me just hit one of these things up here again so we can see me. Okay, Penny asked about the supply list. I know you can find the supply list on my website, and I already put my address in the chat. 
but also if you need it again, I'm sure Julie can email you the um, supply list again. If you email to, I think it's friendsofsterling.com. I'm not sure what, is that the right one, Julie? Yeah, you could friends of Sterling Road. Um, oh God, I'm drawing a blank on it right now. If if you <laughs> if you need anything, just email me m u k a three zero two one at aol. And also, if you're not receiving any of the emails that I've been sending out, and you want to be on the list, leave your um, address in the chat for me, please. I I have, um, I mean, I, I think most everybody's getting them, but two or three get returned to me all the time. So I don't know why. So yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't receiving it uh, until now, today, right before the class when I got it. And I talk, I was talking on the phone with Suzanne. She didn't get it. Elaine Cohen, she didn't get it. So oh. they couldn't come to the class. Oh, well, okay. You, um, just tell them I, I, those might have been the ones that were returned to me for some reason. I want to make sure I, I have them right. Penny, I just see yours now. So thanks. And I'll get you on the email. But you can also, don't forget, you can go to my website and get on my newsletter email list as well. And on my website, on the news tab, I always post information about how to get into the classes and you can find the stuff there too. So don't miss the class. Yep. Okay. Let, let us know somehow so we can make sure you get the info so you can get here. Okay. Julie, when you say the emails you've been sending out, is it from you personally or Sterling Road? Um, I use my own email address. Okay, good. I don't think I get them from you, but I've gotten from Sterling Road. Like I never got a supply list. I, well, got I attached it. it to the same as the flyer. So if you got the flyer, the colorful flyer, it was attached to that with that. A colorful flyer saying, about this class in particular? Yeah. Well, no, not this class in particular, but a flyer that lists all the classes mm -hmm. and then had That's the pictures true. of what we were going to be doing. Uh, all of the art classes. I, Diane, I'm pretty sure you're on my list. But you okay. can leave me the supply list once again. And I'll, I mean, the, your email address once again. The supply list is basic that I send out. Um, now, Christine's told us next week what we need, the markers and, and such. So, but. but also, I, another quick FYI, I, I'm recording the sessions. So okay. if you know someone that wanted to come but missed it for one reason or the other, you can go on my YouTube channel. Now I am out of town right now, so it'll be a couple extra days till I get back home and can uh, edit it down to the right format, but it'll be on my YouTube channel, which is again, also just my name, M. Christine Landis uh, on YouTube. And if you can't remember that, just remember my website. You can get a link to my YouTube channel on my website. And uh, you can rewatch this class we just did today. You can also rewatch the ones we did about drawing and painting the sailboat. Um, I have those on there, so yeah. you can see them again. Yes, Christine does. Also, if you're a member of the uh, Friends of the Sterling Road Library, they also put out the, the same video on our Friends of the Sterling Road website. So you can watch the video from there as well. Okay. All right, everybody, have a great week, and um, I'll see you next Friday at 1 o'clock. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy birthday again. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank Bye. You. Nice to see you. Bye-bye. Bye, Christine. Bye, Mercedes. Thanks mm -hmm. for coming. You're welcome. Bye, Christine. Thanks. Happy birthday again. Thank you, Anne. Okay. See you next week. Okay. See you next week. That was great, Christine. Okay. It went pretty good, didn't it? It did. It was great. This was so much fun. I love this one. <laughs> good. I'm glad. It's, yeah. a, it's a great one for learning to control your watercolor. And, you know, people always have that question about how much water do I put on the page and why is my paper not dry three days